Good evening, everybody. What's going on, Zach? How are you tonight? So in order to keep these live streams short and consistent and to the point, what we are here to do tonight is to replace the VTX in my 6-inch Ethics Air Canasty Cougar Frame, which is now available on the Ethics website and Team Black Sheep website. And I am replacing the VTX with a ready-made RC Cricut Pro v2 now i live pretty i live uh, pretty close to ready-made rc and i've bought a lot of my products there for years now and i ran and still run their older line of cricket vtx's um, which is these little blue ones right here with the case i actually have one of these in my uh, second reverb that i took out of the case and they're great VTXs, um, but now they have the new version of the Pro out, which is awesome because if you take a look at everything here, first of all, the price is right, $33.99. It's got Smart Audio, it's got the MMCX connection that some people love or hate. I'm on the fence, but I know I'm not 100% happy with UFL connections. I've broke a few on my micro crossfires and also on my unifies. So the reason why I, you know, I usually use TBS unifies, but the reason why I decided to go with the Cricut is tired of my unifies just dying. It's just something that kind of happens. I don't know if it is because of the heat that they generate or what, but for some reason, sometimes they just die. And even though TBS will usually take care of you, um, it's just kind of a hassle because you have to send them to Hong, you have to file the ticket, and you're dealing with Hong Kong time, so... It's kind of a three or four day process sometimes to get an RMA and then you send it off and you kind of got to wait and everything else. Sometimes on occasions, they'll just go ahead and send you a new one. So I'm not saying I'm totally upset with TBS and everything like that. I'm just trying to I want to do something that I have an issue with sometimes that could make things a little bit easier and I've had good luck with these in the past. I've talked to a lot of people that have been beta testing them and they said they've been working great. And the form factor is a lot smaller. It's gonna fit right inside the frames, no problem. They picked up the Smart Audio license and all that kind of stuff. So I'm pretty happy with that. So you're liking them. That's good to hear. The one thing that I'm going to be doing on this is since it is smart audio capable, my Seal Racing F4 board here has seen better days. It has some electrical issues going on. And what I intend to do eventually is take this out and replace it with a spare Bardwell that I have but the six inches are just so temperamental man and like it flies so good I just don't want to like upset this and ruin it at all that's my biggest fear I don't care about doing the work you know trimming down the wires and stuff would will take no time but I don't want to have to deal with that that being said I cannot wire up smart audio to this so I have two options with the Cricut I can either use the buttons 
now to control my power and channel and everything like that. Or I can actually wire it up to channel four on the crossfire and set the crossfire module to actually control the smart audio with that. So that's how I'm gonna wire it up here. Hope we'll see if that works. Hopefully that works. And then the other thing is that these have microphones built into them as well. And at long range, I usually don't fly with a mic, but at long range, I kind of like it. Um, so I'm interested to see if uh, I can get the microphone to work as well, piggyback in the smart audio off of the micro VTX. Now, typically I could power to, um, I would power everything off of the regulated uh, power sources on the boards. But since this board, even with like this big, huge cap here and caps on the ESCs, you know, like I said, there's just something going on with this board. And hopefully one of these days it just doesn't go down on me out at range or I'll be pretty upset. But I'm just going to go off of VBAT power to power that. And then I'm going to power the camera through the Cricut as well and use the Cricut's filtering because this thing is pretty, this thing's pretty beefy as far as like how it looks, the components and stuff on it, you know, the FETs and everything are a lot bigger than what you usually would see on some of your VTXs that are out there. So I have, uh, I have good confidence that I'm going to get good video out of this. So it's got two button controls. Um, the only thing that does stink about the crickets is you, when you set it up, you still have to set it up so you have access to be able to touch the buttons because you have to be able to turn it on with the buttons. It doesn't have an automatic power up function, which kind of stinks. But that's okay. And I heard that it does automatically power up into pit mode every single time. So let's see. In the box you get a dipole and you get the MMCX to SMA connector. So that's good. And we get our power wires and everything here. And I'm not going to trim them. One thing I've learned, even though they do sell harnesses, is that no matter how much length I have, I do like to try to keep things clean. But I've kind of learned to not overdo it and just kind of deal with stuffing the wires in here. I don't want to leave myself like super short on anything. So we'll get the harness ready here first. Everything's real nice. Uh, silicone wire. And if anybody has any questions at any time, just go ahead and let me know. Thanks for joining the stream. It's awesome. I love makes building and tinkering a lot more fun and we can all kind of talk to, together while we're doing stuff. I actually got to fly a couple packs today. I was doing some more uh, D shot uh, 1200 testing. So that was very fun and interesting. So the first thing I'm doing here is just going to tin up the power wire after I turn my soldering iron up a little bit here I want to tin it up and plug it up and just get power going to it and work on the whole smart audio thing first because that's kinda the one thing that really interests me is whether or not I can get that running through the big uh, crossfire module so 
so the white wire is smart audio and we can probably take a little bit of that off and I'm gonna grab some heat shrink here and stuff that on the wire now I have a few I have I think one or I think yeah I think I only have one quad right now that I have running this way where I'm actually controlling the VTX from the crossfire itself and it works just fine no problem with it at all So I've basically, if you look at the crossfire module here, I have added a extra wire down here to channel four. And all we are going to do is just splice these two together. then put a little solder on here joint okay and pull the heat shrink down There's that. Now we are going to hook up the power. I'm going to spin this around a little bit here. For some reason, I always find it easier to solder from this side. So we have our positive wire going on to this ESC pad. And our negative wire going on to this pad. Carefully so we don't lose anything else you get to see my bald head there so now I'm going to plug in an antenna just to be sure here so we don't fry anything ok 
Okay. Got everything hooked up. Now we just need a battery. And hopefully this one made it through quality control okay. And we have power. So let's see here. So it's on. Just need to find out what band is. A B E F R. So a long press changes bands. So now we should be on race band one. So we're going to turn the Tyrannus on. Crossfire link low. Crossfire link critical. Crossfire RF profile low speed. And select that vehicle. And we have a bind. And I'm going to go ahead and change the output map here. I'm going to go to, oh, we don't need that plan. I'm going to go to channel four and I'm going to move that all the way up to where it says smart audio. And now I have the option that says uh, VTX. Let me switch uh, screens here so you can see this. So if you see down there on the bottom in the focus that says VTX there. So if I go into the VTX now and I should be able to change the band and change the channel Give it some weird power levels. But it's working. Okay, cool. So, let me zoom in here so you can see this a lot better. So right now it is on A band channel one. If you could see the lights there. So if I go into VTX and I change it to race band, you should see the blue light all the way on the left, which is totally blown out and out of focus, but you might, you should be able to see it move. Think, I think you were able to see that. Watch the channel, the red one below it. It's going to go all the way over next to the, those other ones. Yeah. Sweet.
And I'm going to check the power level here because my power levels aren't lining up. Because I only have the option of 200. Oh, it actually did just switch. Yep, all right, it's switching. All right, so we now have smart audio control through the crossfire with the Cricut Pro. So now we can wire everything else up. Don't you just love it when stuff comes together and actually works? Man, it's great. Alright. So let's press on here. We already have our video hooked up here, so we just need to run our video into the board and our power for the camera. The other good thing about that, especially for long range, is that now, since you can do smart audio control that way, that frees up a UART that you can use for GPS, if you would like. Power wires about right there. Everybody's pretty quiet tonight. Let's just tin up this video wire real quick. And now I will need two more pieces of heat shrink for our camera power.
we are just going to tie these together. This has an Eagle 2 Pro in it. So it will run off of 5 volts nicely. our positive and get this away from the board there is our negative Shrink tubing over. Melt those together. plug the camera in try to at least damn man come on I'm on camera here That's in. And let's tack down our video. VTX signal goes right there on the CL Racing Board. Let's give this thing another test before we hook everything back up and make it all neat. Let's fire up the goggles here. And we must definitely have a picture. I'm going to spool the motors up here just to see how everything looks. I know the 
really isn't a big test because there's no load or nothing on it, but you can usually get a good indication if there's something bad. Looks crystal clear. All right. Awesome. Now comes the fun part. Because now we have to get all of these wires somewhat organized in here I don't know Garrett I would like to but I've already seen that people are having issues updating to uh 2.24 I am honestly half tempted to get a couple micros before you can't find them anymore I'm definitely all about progress and I definitely love that it is smaller but it doesn't meet my particular needs you know I don't need one in there I don't need one that small I guess I'm just gonna wait and see how it goes you know I mean I hate to I mean I totally trust Trappy and TBS and everything that they do but you know, these things just work. I've seen a couple people, what's been ha basically what's been happening, if you haven't seen it, is they are having uh, issues binding. So when you go to update to 224, and then you bind they get locked out and people have had to do some reset and a few other things that stuff kind of makes me nervous I think some people still have them I don't think all I don't think all of them have got sucked up yet I was actually just watching a couple INAV videos earlier, and uh, I've got a recruit up here that runs just fine, even without INAV. But I kind of want to, kind of want to try out INAV. But I need another crossfire. But see, then you don't have to worry. Don't you don't have to worry about doing stuff like this with the nano. See, this is where the nano really like freaking comes into comes into play. Like it's just a no-brainer on where you stick it. You just put it wherever. I mean, it's the same size as a RXSR. And the unfortunate thing is that even as I was doing some of my testing out there, it's like I'm no I'm no great super pilot, but I've been doing this stuff long enough to know what flies good and what doesn't. And you know, can't I, I'm never going to be able to go away from CRSF now. That's the problem. There's no way. It is a huge difference. I don't know if you have a mix of aircraft or not, but 
if you're all crossfire throw one of your free skies back on your favorite rig that you fly the most and you'll see what I'm talking about it's like flying it's like flying a brick awesome about the Konasty frame here it's got the perfect zip tie holders and holes for everything these four down here one two three four really helps out when it comes to like doing stupid mounting like this But besides my 2.4 rig, this is the one that I fly the furthest with as far as the 6 inch. It's not the funnest. My Proton is definitely the my f funnest mid to long range and probably flies the longest and everything else. But I just like, for some reason, this this I, this unit in an L configuration just works sometimes it doesn't work I've tried it on my it doesn't work as good on my reverb as it does on this I don't know why everything's the same okay so we got that there So now, where are we going to put this? Definitely could have made these wires shorter, but... We will just twist them up. And I definitely want to definitely want to go heat shrink down. Yeah been taking things a little slow RL 40 40 minutes it's not that uh, pretty easy job so far it's gonna take longer to mount everything back the way it was than to install everything So I'm going to stick that pad there and I am going to stuff the cricket in right there. Hmm. This is what nah, that's not, it's not going to work. It has to go the other way. antenna here
Okay. Well, what if we just... What if we just stand them up? Actually, no. Don't need to do that. My antenna... Just do not like anything on top of the flight controller at all. Is that going to work with no... I can have access to my bind button. And the power buttons. I don't know, that is smushed in there. But if it works, it works.
Yeah, it comes and goes, man. I mean, you know, you just you just see how it is. You just start grabbing stuff. Like I grab that, grab this, and you just kind of relocate it and find a place for for all this stuff. It's just kind of how things go. <laughs> All right, so here's my top plate. Almost think I would be better using one of these. The worst is when you're trying to build a wing, especially once you get it all together and you're trying to put the electronics and stuff in it. That's when it really sucks. Because, I mean, you know, take up the whole thing. I usually end up moving all my stuff out to the garage on my real workbench. But, you know, that's the same thing out there. There's like freaking saws and sandpaper and this and that. And, and I've done a pretty good job of cleaning this up down here and reorganizing everything, though, over the past couple weeks. Trying to add some, well, take away some complexity. You just start looking around sometimes and you see just all the shit that you've accumulated and you're just like, you can't find something and you really need something stupid and then you're like, well, I can't find it, so it's only five bucks or it's only this or that, so you end up just ordering another one and then... Then you find it. This will be much better because now I can pick this up and stick that under there. Um, those are the buttons. Damn it. Well, I can just do it like that. And then put that on there like that.
Yeah, it's a good looking frame, man. I like it. Like Eric said, it's nothing really special, but it's taken everything. It's been the best behaving six inch that I've had. I've had different motor combinations, different ESC combinations, tried all kinds of different props, and I have always been able to get a tune on it. With little to no hassle. sucker is crammed in there now that's for sure um I think they are I think they're 20 I mean there it's a pretty dropped it's a pretty dropped deck all the way or all the way down test again here see no fire so we should be good cool now nothing's mounted to the top deck I hate having stuff mounted to the top and I can still get a velcro strap through there I just cannot stand having stuff mounted to the top deck I don't know why I just can't stand it Mach 1 didn't have the Mach 2 I ended up actually buying I hate to admit it I don't know where it's at it's here somewhere here it is I ended up getting the AKK version and it was the worst VTX ever and they make them for RDQ I always had good luck with the crickets. This one's working out good so far here on the bench. I put one in my second reverb. Yeah, and that's and that's a reason why I went went back to these crickets, man. It's because I'm tired of paying forty and fifty bucks for unifies and them dying, you know. And like I said, I know Trappy and them will take care of me, but you know, I'm I'm an I'm less than an hour drive from Ready Man RC, so I can do a support ticket 
and drive down there the same day after work and walk out the door with a new VTX if I have a problem. Which I don't expect to have a problem anyway. But just in case, it's just nice to know that that's an option. So now this is where things are going to look really stupid because I'm running this L configuration instead of a instead of a mortal T. Yeah, Dorian, I hooked up Smart Audio to channel 4 of my micro VTX, and I'm using the big Crossfire module to run it. I've already checked it out, and it works uh, just fine. So that way I don't have to worry about, you know, any protocols or anybody getting in a pissing match about anything. And um, Tim and all them at ReadyMade ended up... Um, buying the licensing fee for the protocol anyhow. So don't have to worry about no more of that childness. Which I'm not blaming. I don't, I don't, I mean... I take a side with everybody's got a point in that battle, I guess. You know? Trappy and them made it. They got ripped off. Then they get ripped off and stuff again. Now he's charging people to use his protocol. It's all business, man. I mean, people got to make money off of this stuff if we want new toys. That's why it gets so. It, it cracks me up when I see people like flipping out about. Oh, this is open source and everything else. You know, like... I love Bardwell's channel. I love the guy. Uh, you know, he's taught me a little bit. Nobody's ever taught me as much as Blue Falcon, though. But, you know, he talks about open source and, you know, all this other stuff. And... puts out these videos about it and stuff and how you know people shouldn't be ripping people off and then but he doesn't have a problem running those live streams and having that super chat money roll in He just did a video the other day too where he was oh it was the it was the free sky video where he was talking about and he was talking about getting his hands on a crossfire and that he couldn't find one like us because they are out of stock and it kind of made me smile because as much shit as he talked on in that Facebook battle with Trappy about crossfire if, if Trappy ever sold out and gave him a freaking crossfire to review, I'd be, I'd be pissed. I might quit buying TBS stuff if he ever did that after all the crap talking he did. He should have to pay for that shit just because of his attitude. Or maybe I'm just being grumpy because it's late. Well, that's not the prettiest L configuration, but it's solid. Bring that pagoda back a little bit.
I need to redo the STL file that I made on this mount and make it shorter so it's not as long and dangly. Well, yeah, and there's more to it, you know, like if you guys are engaged into this stuff as much as I am and you listen to him when he's to Trappy when he's on these podcasts and stuff like that. I mean, there's more to smart audio than just what we do now than just changing your PIDs and everything else like that. Like he has like a plan, you know, for like a lot more type of like software integration and all kinds of stuff like that. So, I mean, it's not just about changing PIDs and VTX channels. There's going to be a lot of development with that stuff. I mean, it's a powerful way of communication. Boom. All right. I'm pumped. That's working. All right. Let's test this stuff again. Welcome to OpenTX. Switch warning. Power. Okay, so since it so I know there was some confusion out there, but since it is hooked up and sensing smart audio it is powering itself on. I didn't have to turn it on and off with the buttons. So that is a good thing. That makes me happy. So now, let me adjust the camera here so you guys can see this again. Zoom. All right. So we're going to long press here. And then you can see we can move down and it says VTX. Right there. So we can select VTX. And then right there is all of our features. Channel, power, and everything like that and I'll just verify this again real quick we'll throw it up on channel 8 exit out and yes it did change to channel 8 Back to channel one, boom, done. Yeah, the Big Daddy's the only way to roll, man. I did the same thing, though. I got the micro bundle, just like half the people out there, and then was like, oh, crap, I'd really like to have that uh, big bundle. 
that sure would make life a lot easier. I'll just sell it for less than I paid, like everything else in this hobby, even though it's only two weeks or three weeks old and get the big one. So that's what I did. Big hog is ready to go. So the old props back on here. I'm ready to do some flying tomorrow. Hopefully test this thing out. wish they would come out with a new cheaper diversity receiver that's what I wish I was looking at a couple of those for my wing ah man those things are not cheap I never have either. I mean, you're kind of right. I mean, with with the unless you're going to be doing planes and stuff, I think the micro is just fine. I think most people just step up because of the added security level. Like I still don't. I mean, I I only run mine at 500 milliwatts. I don't uh, run the external battery and crank it up to like a watt or two watt unless I'm going to try to push it. You know, I mean, we just don't have enough, we just don't have enough battery power to do anything like that, you know, we're, I mean, we just can't, we just can't get out there long enough. Now on my wing, and that's kind of a different story, that has 2.4 video on it, and I use uh, the ground station. And, you know, when you're flying high with uh, wings, I mean, 25 milliwatts goes on and on and on. I don't know if who was on, I know RL was, but I don't know who else was on when I was doing my um, Fox Ear uh, micro adjustments. I had another remote, another Fox Ear remote in my Baby Hawk box, and I plugged it in because I put the Fox Ear micro in the Baby Hawk, and the thing worked like a charm. So I had a janky remote the whole time. I sat here for an hour and a half trying to navigate through that OSD to change things. Which is crazy too because I even tried using um, a run cam OSD remote and it didn't work.
so there there she be guys all ready to go VTX installed weather's well, supposed to be nice tomorrow so I'm gonna rip it up a little bit with it take it out a little bit see how good things uh, see how good things are my five and a half inch is down right now because I'm waiting on a camera because I took the micro out of it and put that into the baby hawk because the foxier camera that comes with the baby hawk is horrible So now that I'm all rebuilt here and everything, anybody have any questions about anything on here before we cut the stream off? I'm up to eight people here. This is uh, exciting. It's like a party. don't really have anything else here to show or talk about right now I'm trying to think if there's anything got a micro eagle coming which is going to be awesome why the full one and not the micro Yeah, the Cricut does have MMCX, and it is tough. It's not coming out. It's not going to bust off like those st stupid UFLs. I really don't have a dog in that fight, but I know, I know I've ruined more UFLs than MMCXs, so that's what I'm going to try. Uh, the full size crossfire, I think it's just, it's more of just a piece of, it's more just peace of mind and more power. I mean, I think Dorian said it bad, best on the chat for our application. It is just more of a convenience. Um, you can do everything with the Lewis script that you can but you know it's nice having that extra power and the thing that remember about crossfire with us though is extra power doesn't extra you know will equal a little bit more distance but and, but it also equals staying in CRSF 150 hertz a lot further as well and that's kind of important because if you're looking, if you're doing some really aggressive freestyle, uh, depending upon where I fly, like out here, if you watch some of my videos, I usually drop to 50 hertz on the other side of the tree line, which is about a quarter to a third of a mile away. Um, you know, it's over muddy, you know, cornfields and stuff like that. So the RF is just getting soaked up by all that. But as soon as I get out to about three quarters of a mile and I start losing video because I can't penetrate through that anymore and I gain altitude, then my 150 hertz will come back. But if I 
fire if I plug a battery into it and fire it up at two watts. I don't know. I've never really actually fired it up at two watts and seen if I could keep 150 hertz through there. And you'll know that because that's your uh, radio frequency mode. Two is 150 hertz and one is 50 hertz. And if you set up your um, if you set up your uh, logical switches and alerts and alarms and stuff like that, or your telemetry, then you can have it announce um, or display what radio frequency mode that you're in, so you know when you're dropping. Like I'll show you here on the Tyrannus real quick. Welcome to OpenTX. Switch warning. So I don't even have it set up on my So, there it is, RFMD. So now it would display right here and then I have it set up audibly right there on that third line to tell me every 10 seconds um, what mode that I'm in and then on my other ships I actually I don't have them programmed in here but I have the logical switches programmed in where it will actually only instead of telling me every 10 seconds it'll actually alert me when it uh, switches back and forth Yeah, that's what everybody that's what everybody did. Welcome to the club. I'll show you. Welcome to OpenTX. I'll show you what that looks like okay. here. Where I have it set up. Yeah. Here we go. And see, I got this from... I got all of these from uh, Painless360. He did a video on how to set all this up. And it's kind of out there, too. So you can go through and you can set up all of these logical switches here. So it'll alert you when you switch from mode one the mode mode two to mode one link quality drops and everything like that and then you just set up he had like a custom uh, track uh, playlist that he recorded so it'll actually just tell you you know whenever you're changing so that way you don't have to worry about anything but you can set all this up with your micro too. You don't have to have the large one to do it. You're getting the same. This is all, all of this information is built into CRSF. 
So it's all there. All you got to do is go into um where's it at? All you got to do is go into telemetry and go to sensors and discover new sensors just like you did for our, for for uh our quality and all of that stuff will be there. So right there is radio frequency mode. So it'll all be there. You don't even have to have the the full size. Yeah, just go to Painless360's video, watch his video, and he has the uh, recordings right there, too, that he set up. They're a little long, because it says, like, Crossfire Telemetry Mode 1, Crossfire Telemetry Low. Like, they're kind of long, so you can kind of tailor them down a little bit if you want to take the time using Audacity or whatever to make your own alerts that are a little bit less annoying or you can always just tell it to play the value you don't have to have it play the track you can select on here to play the value um, whenever the logic changes which is pretty cool Yeah, it takes a little bit of time, but like once you do it, it's done. You know, it's not. It's great because then, like, I don't. Cre I don't even create like when I build new quads and stuff. Now, the thing that's awesome about Crossfire, you know, I don't even create like new models. I just copy the model and just change its name because everything is gonna. I'm everything's gonna be set up exactly the same in Betaflight and everything else i mean my sub trims are always going to be the same and and everything so it's that's the best that's the best way to do it so when you build a new quad next time just copy the model that and just change the name don't go through and create a new model and have to worry about putting all that stuff in again it's just very time consuming and if and to save yourself a little bit of time the first time you set it up you can't hook it up to the computer and type all that stuff in um, or copy and paste it from his uh, YouTube video description instead of, uh, you know, thumbing through and doing all that. So that's kind of a time saver, too. But, yeah, once I mean, once it's done, it's done. And I've done that exact same process with the last three quads that I've built. So... You know my switches are my switches are all are always in the same place. My audio alerts are always in the same place. Of course, the one time I didn't do it, just right there, you could see it's totally different. But I think that's because I pulled a crossfire out of there. I think because I gave up on the six inch for a while until all these new props came out and magically made everything just fly smooth without jello but you ever have any questions man just hit me up I made a couple videos about how to set up like some of the basic stuff I haven't went too crazy on anything else crossfire lately i still want to do some more antenna testing but i think everybody a lot of people still watch that video but i think so many people have done it now it's pretty much irrelevant everybody knows that for 90 percent of 99 percent of our applications running the diamond or the regular t like this with the immortal t is pretty much the best way to go
Yep, you'll get it. Just takes a little bit of time. And you'll be all set, man. All right, well, I have done what I have wanted to do here. I know, I've got 11 people watching. It, now it's down to 10. But hey, that's good. Hopefully somebody learned a couple things tonight. And thanks everybody for hanging out and all that kind of stuff. And I will be putting up some videos on how good this looks and runs and I also have uh, the D shot uh, 1200 uh, videos coming up I had some real fun testing that versus 600 on my two reverbs today uh, it was real fun so baby hawk stuff gonna have the micro eagle coming back in so I'll be getting back on the five and a half inch proton and uh, that's it. So thanks for watching and talk to you guys later. Hit me up if you need anything.